And it's difficult, isn't it? Because uh, they only have the one tool. They only have the one tool to try and get it under control. And obviously it makes a sitting government nervous, as you mentioned late last year, cost of living, all these things are right in the front of their minds. Correct. We wouldn't even have a 1.5% GDP growth rate him, except for government spending. That's the bulk and of the migration, probably. Too, yeah. And migration. Yeah. If it weren't for migration, we would be technically in a recession mm. uh, under one measure, which is per head uh, G, uh, output. So, look, we've got problems ahead. It's going to be a tough year. Small business is finding it hard. Business is not investing, then, and our productivity levels are low, which is the individual work contribution of each person. I'm, I'm sorry, but the government, economic a framework is not working because they give everything to the unions, they're not giving anything to small business, the, the taxation system penalises the successful. This country is very complacent and we're going to now feel the effects of it. Yeah, some challenges, uh, but I think a lot of people are really hoping for rate cuts. Now, what about last week's by-election? What do you make of it? Look, the Liberals wanted to do better. There's no question mm. because of all the reasons we've just spoken about uh, that people would be feeling the cost of living pressures. But it was a respectable uh, swing to them of 4%. And remember, the government took Aston, a, a Liberal seat, in a by-election only 12 months ago in Melbourne from the Liberals. So in, 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 in the tough, slow, trench warfare slog of opposition... This was a morale booster to the opposition, but at the same time, the government is entitled to think that their strategies are generally working. Super Tuesday in the United States, has anything changed? Only that the momentum is with Trump and the size of his victory. The bookmakers now have him in front uh, as favourite. Uh, the polls are pretty level pegging with Biden. It's anybody's contest. He was impressive, Joe Biden, um, channelling Martin Luther King Jr and a bit of Rocky Balboa in his State of the Union. It was uh, a, uh, a more upbeat, energetic... Um, you'd have to say that he did well. Yes. An hour and a half, by the way, mm. without any big gaffes or a couple there. Um, this was his big test. His, his advisers had prepped him to within an inch of his life because anything could have gone wrong with the biggest primetime audience he's likely to face until the debates. So, yeah, I'd, I'd give him a B+. Plus. B+. Plus. Um, That's not a bad mark. <laughs> I would have taken a B-plus any day at school. <laughs> I never even got close to a B-plus. So, yeah, Biden got through it. The man can read a teleprompter, let's put it that way. I'll tell you what was well written. It was very well written. Who's going to win, though? In, in the Peter McGoran crystal ball that sits just out here... All right, just don't replay this tape. I'd, I'd give it to Biden at this stage. There's two major challenges. The first is, will the Nikki Haley Republicans, the so-called moderate Republicans, go over to Trump? Trump. So he needs to win them over. He has to win over the moderate Republicans who have stayed away from him. But Biden also... He suffered some embarrassments during mm. his primaries. There's no candidate against him, but some Democrats deliberately, you know, as high as 20% in a couple yeah. of the primaries, wrote um, wrote uh, that they, on, on the ballot paper uh, they rejected the candidate. So he has to win them over. Yeah. And remember, it's a voluntary system, Tim. Mm. Whoever gets out the vote will win it. So very, very close. If I had to put my money on today, it'd be for Biden. But I might put my money on Trump as a saver.